Hi everyone, so a few weeks ago I decided to make myself one of these like clear plastic storage pockets and the reason I made it was because I wanted to use up some of these beautiful Disney um, fabrics that are from Maker Superstore and I'd, I've made a few other projects and I thought what else can I make? I'd seen this type of thing some time ago on the internet so I went back searching and I came across quite a few of this type of clear pocket design. They were in various sizes, some didn't have any kind of description with them, some I think one of them was like silent and they all seem to be made in different sizes and using different techniques but were all very similar. So I decided I'd make one of my own. Now in the UK we're in lockdown. I'm not sure whether we will be by the time you see this video. But certainly while I've been making this one and the one I'm about to make we are still in lockdown. And I didn't have any clear vinyl. And as I say, I'd got this idea in my head and I wanted to make it. So the only thing I could find that was clear vinyl to use was one of these page protectors that I have from Stampin' Up. Now, I think these have been retired uh, just recently. But I these are for scrapbook pages, I think, I believe. That's why they've got the holes in the side. I think you're meant to put them in an album and put your pages in them. But I use them for storing my designer series paper and cardstock. And I had one that was unused left. So I decided to try it. So basically I cut this section off here, leaving the seam intact. And then I chopped off a section of the top. So I think I ended up with roughly 12 by 9, I think it was. So 12 wide by 9 high. And I left it double. I left it double thickness to give it a bit more rigidity. And that's what you see here. So when you put your hand in, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't come apart. It's it acts as one piece, but it is actually a, a double layer, if that makes sense. And that determined, this plastic pocket determined the size of the project I could make. Now, I have sent off for some clear fabric vinyl from the internet while we're in lockdown, and I'm still waiting for it to come. But I'm, I'm going to show you all the elements that are needed and hopefully the vinyl will turn up and I can recreate this project. But these fabrics are beautiful. I mean, you've got the Disney, di uh, like Mickey heads. Then you've got this beautiful mini with foxes and like little leaves. Then I've used a plain pink on the back. This is all from Maker Superstore. And I've just done some quilting, you know, simple quilted lines, which basically holds this inside layer. This is a piece of wadding in between and the pink. So that was all quilted. And then I put the project together. Now, if you've seen any of my YouTube lives recently, you will have seen me cut this design and again I'm using the Disney fabrics and this has all got an iron-on backing on it and I cut all these pieces in a recent YouTube live And this is a design that's in my SDX 2200. 
So rather than use just a, a piece of fabric this time on the back, I'm going to use a piece of white fabric and applique this onto it. And then I'm just going to do some simple quilting. So I'm starting off with a piece of 13 by 13, roughly, white fabric. And I'm going to position this fairly near the bottom. I want it to be finished at about 12 by 12. And I want it, I want this little sunbonnet sue to be seen in this section of the fabric pocket when it's finished. So I'm going to position a, you know, fairly central, layer up the pieces where I think they're going to look right. And I think what I might do, rather than have a standing as, as the design is in the machine, I might put a foot there so she's sitting because that's going to give me a little bit more room here at the bottom. So I'm going to iron that onto this piece of white and then I'll be able to do some quilting. So to make this pocket in the size I've made mine, you're going to need an inner piece, which is represented by the pink Minnie Mouse fabric here, 12, uh, 13 by 13, a backing piece, which is the pink, 13 by 13. Then you need two pieces of fabric to make this section here and the both of these pieces of fabric need to be 12 by 4 inches one you fold in half and press and one you fold into quarters so I folded it in half and pressed it opened it out and then folded the outside edges towards the center and I don't fold right to the center line I leave a little bit of a gap and that way when you then fold over this folds over nice and neat you've not got like four layers of bulk here in the middle so there the other two pieces and then you need something to make your binding and again, I'm using this Mickey head fabric and your strips need to be two and a half inches wide. You're going to need comfortably to give yourself some um, overlap when you're binding all this. You're going to need about 60 inches in total of two and a half inches wide. So I've got some that I had left over from the first one and then I've got some strips here that I'm going to join together and make one continuous piece that's two and a half inches wide that I'm then going to fold in half and iron and that will become my binding. Okay, so I've got my piece of white backing and I've folded, it, folded this in half just to give me a kind of center point and then I'm going to bring all the bits in and I want her fairly near the bottom and fairly central because this is going to be trimmed down to 12 by 12 once I've quilted it all so I'm going to put that section there this one on top just 
kind of to get me the, the placement for now. And once I'm happy with the placement, I can then start ironing it down and working out how to um, see how I'm going to sew it down and everything. I mean, this little hand is a, a tiny little piece, so it's only going to be simple sewing on this. I'm not a quilter by any stretch of the imagination. And as I said before, in the machine she stood up but I'm thinking I'm going to put a foot there and have a sat down and that will enable me to position her lower down because the clear plastic is only going to be in a certain part of the project. So I think that's how it's going to be. So I'm going to move these off to one side. In fact, I'm going to leave the foot there move the hand and move this and then I'm going to iron the foot into place and then I'm just going to layer up the design so I think that'll do for now and then what I'm thinking about doing is just stitching maybe a straight stitch along this band here. I might just try and do one close to either side of the edge. And I'm thinking I'm just going to go round this section and this section. Just with a straight stitch. And then I'm thinking I might do a zigzag stitch all the way round the outside to you know to, to hold it all down so as i said i'm going to try and do a couple of straight lines on the band something round the arm and the hand and then i'm going to attempt to go all the way around the outside edge with a zigzag stitch so i'm just going to put my machine on slow and i'm on a straight stitch and we'll see what happens So I've managed to get all the way around the outside with the zigzag. I'm going to come around here and then I'm going to come round the apron and then I'm going to come round the shoe and I've nearly finished. Well, I'm ready to start putting the backing piece together. So I've got my outer fabric and this doesn't matter whether it's right side or wrong side. So if you're using a pattern you want your good side face down, okay? So that's my piece of fabric. As I say, these are cut bigger than 12 by 12, but I'm gonna cut it down to 12 by 12 once I have quilted it. I'm going to, my batting isn't quite, I think this is 13 by 13 and my batting isn't that big. When I made this one, I cut everything at 13 by 13 and then I trimmed it down afterwards but I've only got one piece of this batting left and I want to use it so I'm not too concerned because I'm going to chop this down anyway so I'm just going to use a piece of batting and then I'm going to position the piece that's going to show through the pocket on top right side up so this is what I've got so far And as I said before, I used patterned fabric for the inside on this one. And this one I'm using my applique. And I don't want to applique over her because I've done this zigzag stitch all the way around. But I want to obviously secure these three layers together. So I'm thinking that I'm just going to do simple 
straight lines. I'm going to do some vertical lines and then some horizontal lines, finishing just above a hat. I'm going to leave the bottom edge open because that's going to get caught up within the binding. But I want to secure these three layers together. I'm going to sew these layers together just using a straight stitch. Okay, so that's how it's looking so far. I'm not sure how well you're going to see it with the brightness. Okay, so here it is so far. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to level up the bottom edge and then I'm going to trim this down to 12 by 12. Okay, so what I'm doing here now, I know that this white edge here is straight because that's what I cut with my rotary cutter before. So I've got a line on my ruler here, which I'm lining up on that white fabric. So I know that that is straight. And then I can see that the white here overlaps the pink that's on the bottom. So, so long as I'm lining up to the pink piece on the bottom and lining this up, here this should be square and I'm just going to chop that off okay so that's all fine so I know that this is square now on the bottom and then I just want to square this up to 12 inches so I've got my 12 by 12 inch panel this is my backing piece quilted and appliqued. I know that the bottom's not sewn together but that's going to get caught up when I put the binding on so I'm not bothered about that. So now it's a case of just assembling the other parts. So I'm going to use a piece of pink zip again like I did on the last one and this is continuous zip. You can buy this like by the the length, the meter, you know multiple meters and you buy the sliders so I'm just going to leave this as it is. I'm not going to bother cutting it. I want it to overhang. I always find as a an amateur sewer, if you like, I prefer to have my zip bigger and then cut it down rather than trying to work with a specific size zip. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the zip apart and then I'm going to cut on an angle 
like a V shape and then this is the right side up you can tell which is the wrong side to the zipper and then with the shaped edge of the zipper not the flat end facing towards me I'm going to slide that in to the teeth so the teeth go into the fat part of the zipper and then the little thin gap in the side picks up the fabric on the side of your zipper and it is a bit fiddly and then you need to kind of like wiggle it down until you get I find kind of squeezing it together you need about three hands to do this and then you'll see the edge of your zipper coming out so pull it down and then pull it back up and you know your zipper's working position it well past the fabric okay and what I'm going to do this is the folded edge this is the open edge and what's going to happen is this is going to be sewn on here with a top stitch and then this is your other half and that's going to be sewn on there with a top stitch but before I do that I need to prepare the, the vinyl piece because that's got to go in here. In the filming of this video this section now is probably a month on from when I started so if any of the surroundings in the video look differently that's why and that's because I've been waiting for well over three weeks for this vinyl to arrive in the post so what I'm going to do now is prepare the vinyl in readiness for doing the zip for the front of this folder so I have two pieces of fabric here that are 12 inches wide by 4 inches high. One of them is folded and pressed in half. So this is now 12 by 2. And I'm just going to put that on one side. And the other piece of 12 by 4 is folded in half, pressed, open out, and then fold the outsides into the middle and press and then fold again. So you end up with 12 by one inch. And it's this 12 by one inch that I'm going to use first. So I've got my piece of vinyl here that to be fair is just over 12 inches wide. I think it's maybe about 12 and a half, something like that. And it's probably about 10 inches long. I only need it maybe about nine but I've cut it a little bit bigger. It's a bit wonky at the bottom, but I'm not bothered about that. You probably won't be able to see it with it being clear. But the top is, is straight, so that's all that matters at this moment. And again, as I say, this section of the video now is a month on from when I started. So the lighting and everything could be different in my room. It's warm today, so I've got my door open. So if you hear noise, that's why. So basically what I'm going to do now, I'm going to open up this piece just so it's like the two inch wide. You've got the both sections folded in here and I'm going to place this in the middle and sandwich the vinyl in between this piece of 12 by one inch if you like one inch here one inch there if that makes sense not the bigger piece that's just folded in half okay so i'm just going to put some clips on it <clears throat> and hold it in place and as i say it's slightly over 12 inches wide so i'm just centralizing it really on my piece of vinyl Okay, so I'm going to use my zipper foot so that I can get close to this edge, but you could just use your normal foot and move your needle over, whichever you prefer. And I'm keeping the presser foot on the fabric, so the presser foot's not touching the vinyl at all. And that way this should glide through the machine 
perfectly well. If you've got one of those, I think, is it a Teflon foot that, you know, you can use for like sticky fabrics like this, then use that. But basically you want to just attach or you want to sew this piece of vinyl into this fabric by just sewing as close to this bottom edge as possible. So I'm just going to use a straight stitch and sew along. Okay, so that's how it's looking. So the vinyl is sandwiched in between this piece of fabric. Now I need to attach this to the zip. In the previous section of the video I showed you how I'm using continuous zip. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave some zip at the end where the pull is so it's out of the way. And I'm just going to put a clip on that just to hold it together so that I don't pull the pull right off the end. So I'm going to take this piece of fabric with the vinyl and I'm going to I'm going to place it onto the zip like so. And now I'm going to stitch through the whole lot so your zip's the right way up. I've got my pull when it's closed on the left. You can do it whichever way you want if you prefer yours on the other end turn it round and I'm going to sew this fabric now with a top stitch to the zip. So now I'm going to chop the zip off just past the end of the plastic because this is all going to get trimmed up when I attach it to the back. So for now I'm going to leave it like that. So this is what I've got so far. So I've got the vinyl attached to this fabric by the bottom row of stitching here and now everything is attached to the zip by the top section. So I'm going to bring in my other piece which was 4 by 12 and this is the one that was just folded in half and pressed and I'm going to position this so it lines up with this piece on the top side of the zip with the fold facing in and the outer edges at the top. <clears throat> and again I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing. I'm going to sew just along this edge to attach this piece of fabric to the zip. So that's how it's looking now. So this is the front of the pouch. So the zipper will open like so. <coughs> so I'm going to bring in the back section now, which I made all those weeks ago and did the applique of the sunbonnet suit on. And I'm going to put this piece on top so it all lines up. So this is the front, this is the back and this would be the inside of your, your, your pouch. You can attach your binding at this point and sew it all together or you can do 
a, a straight stitch along this very top edge, very close to the edge, just to kind of keep it together. It's entirely up to you. I think I'm just going to sew a stitch very close to the edge just to hold it together initially. And again, I'm just going to use my zipper foot <clears throat> and just try and get very close to the edge. Because I don't want the stitches to be seen when I put the binding on. I literally, I'm just anchoring the two lots of fabrics together along this top edge. So I'm going to pull the zipper into the middle and I can get rid of this clip that's holding that together now. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to trim up the sides now. I know the top's level because I squared off this section when I'd finished sewing it. <clears throat> and I know <coughs> that the green and white piece is straight. So all that I need to do is get my quilter's ruler and I'm going to line up one of the straight lines on my ruler, don't know if you can see here, one of the dark lines with the top of the fabric. I'm going to line the edge up with this green fabric because I know that this is straight and I'm going to just cut straight down through everything so through the bottom layer the vinyl the zip and I'm going to do the same on the other side and that will make sure that it's definitely square <clears throat> so I can't remember how long this piece of binding is but again from memory let's just see I think it's about two and a half inches wide yeah, it is it's about two and a half inches wide. And basically what I did, this is roughly 12 by 12. So you've got 12, 24, 36, 48 inches. And then you need at least maybe six or seven inches more. So you need at least, I've got a couple of clips in holding it together. I've got a clip where the zip is so I don't take the zipper pull off the end. I'm going to get the end of my fabric and I'm going to start probably about here. I was going to put the seam on the bottom but I think I'll I'll start at the top but I'll start out near, near to the end about maybe two or three inches from the end. So I'm going to leave myself a good say six inches and I'm going to put a clip in that just to hold it together. I've got the open edges outwards, this is the fold, and I'm going to sew this now all the way around and then this will turn over and be sewn on the back for, for the binding. So as I say, you can use a quarter inch foot, you can do this by eye, you can use your regular foot and move your needle over, whichever you prefer. I'm going to probably try and stick with my zipper foot. This is the trickiest bit of the whole project, but if you take your time, it's actually, you know, fairly easy. And I've seen this done in different ways. This is just the way that I've done binding in the past and the way that I did the binding on this one. So when you get to about a quarter of an inch from the edge of your fabric, you want to stop and do a back tack. So this is where you need to take it a bit slower. I 
either do a stop stitch or a back tack and I'm going to actually take the whole thing out of the machine. I've seen people do this where they leave it in the machine but I'm just going to show you hopefully a, a bit better if I take it out of the machine. So what you want to do, this is where I've sewn along and I've stopped, as I say, about a, just over a quarter of an inch actually, but you need to be about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to fold this binding up in a straight line so that the binding edge now runs with the edge of this fabric so you've got this angle here and then I'm going to put my finger along the top here holding everything down and bring this down in a, so it's straight so it lines up here and it lines up here and then I'm going to start sewing again as I say you know other people might do it other ways if if you're a sewer, you might have a better way. This is just the way that I've done quilts when I've made quilts in the past. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this clip and I'm just going to clip the whole lot together. Just to hold it in place while I get it back under the machine. Try and keep everything nice and flat. And then I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to do some forward stitches and some backward stitches and then carry on sewing. Again, when you get to a quarter of an inch from the end, back tack and stop. So again, this is where I started, I came along, I did the fold, I've come down here, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, so I'm going to turn it, because I find I, I can work better if I'm looking at it head on. I'm going to take the binding, put it straight up, so that the edge runs with the edge of this, and I've got this angle here. Put my finger along the top and then pull it down so it's level along the top and then level along the edge. And again, I'm just going to put a clip in it and I'm going to work my way all around and then I'll be back when I get to this open end here. Okay so <clears throat> I've gone round all, I'm, I'm back on the this top section here and what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my join over here somewhere so I'm just going to turn this round threads everywhere, just cut my threads. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this piece as straight as I can. I'm going to bring the, the longer piece that I'm still sewing on and I'm going to overlap this piece by a good quarter of an inch. So, I'm not sure how well you're going to see it, but here's where I started and this is still open and this is where I'm finishing and I'm going to <clears throat> come past this bottom section with the top section by a good quarter of an inch and cut it in a straight line. So that's how it's looking now. I'm going to, and, and the reason I'm doing this now with all this open is because the more you've got left open, the easier this bit is to do. 
I'm going to put these two right sides together <clears throat> like so and I'm going to put this under the machine and sew them together here with like a quarter of an inch seam. Take this clip out, so now they're sewn together and I can just press open that seam and give it a good press. I'm going to use my paper bone folder. <clears throat> you could iron it if you want to, it's entirely up to you. And then now I'm just going to continue sewing where I stopped here all the way along until I get to where I started. looking now. Now on this one I used the quarter inch seam and when I got to this point I just went back round with my ruler and my rotary trimmer and trimmed off some of the excess but on this one I've obviously used the zipper foot and I'm nice and close to the edge so I don't think I actually need to do any trimming on this one and basically what you need to do now is start to fold over your binding so if you push it out and turn it over and fold it over there are various ways you can do this now you can either hand stitch this but I'm not a hand sewer I'm lazy and I'm going to machine sew it so I'm just going to clip this down all you quilters out there will probably be throwing your head in your hands but you know this is just the way I'm making my project you can make yours however you want so again when you get to the corners you're going to fold over <clears throat> flip it over and I found it was easier on my last one to work in one direction so again I'm going to fold this over and then when I get to this side where I've mitered that corner I'm just going to fold this in and it gives me a nice corner here and again I'm just going to put a clip in it work my way round So there it is finished, all the binding all sewn on, all the way around. It's not perfect, but you know, I'm not a professional sewer or quilter. Okay, that's the project. I hope you've liked it. By the time you get to see it, it's probably going to be about two months since I started it, because as I say, in the middle of all this, we are still in lockdown. I've had to wait well over three weeks for this piece of vinyl to arrive. This one was originally made from a vinyl scrapbook pocket, but it was the only one I had. And I posted on Instagram and asked if anybody wanted to see how to make it. And lots of you said yes. So I then had to go and find some vinyl fabric, which I had to get off the internet. And as I say, it's, take, it's taken forever to arrive. But there they are anyway. Anyway, please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.